Audience question. How, how, after how many C-sections is it considered not safe to deliver vaginally? Well, when you get beyond two C-sections, there's not a lot of data uh, because there aren't large numbers. However, the safety, the safety of a VBAC after two cesarean sections is essentially the same as after one. So uh, ultimately, I would say that if you can find a practitioner willing to do it after two, that's a good practitioner. Will they do it after three or four? You know, that would be, have to be individualized based on your whole history. But certainly after one or two C-sections, it's certainly safe to do it. And again, finding the practitioner is the key in making sure you have your records so that they can review your records. But uh, there is not, again, I, I'm, re I'm repeating myself, but there's not a lot of data after, the, after two C-sections. Okay, well, hopefully that was, uh, that was Melissa's question. Hopefully she... Yeah, I mean, Melissa, I mean, I, 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 on an individual case by case basis, there may be some practitioners willing to do more, but for the most part, I think that uh, they're going to probably not be willing to go beyond two C-sections in, in this day and age because there, there's not a lot of data to support that position. Well, how about uh, this question here? Can I cancel my RCS for the 41 weeks and try to go 42 weeks or longer before RCS, and is that safe? Well, the answer to your question in general is yes. The answer to your question specifically really depends on what your situation is with your practitioner. I mean, it always gets back to the situation that you have with your practitioner. I mean, no one can force you to have a, a C-section, Carla, and you're technically not overdue or, or post dates till beyond 42 weeks if you have good dates. And if the environment around your baby is fine and your baby is not too big, and depending on the reason of your, uh, for your first cesarean section, then in general, the answer to your question is yes, you can wait. Uh, but ultimately, it's not for me uh, to usurp the, you know, the authority and the medical knowledge of your practitioner who has, you know, independent, specific information about your particular case. Does that make sense? I hope so. It, it does. I want her to let us know in the chat room because it makes sense to me. Uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully she'll go ahead and uh, and uh, let us know if it uh, if she needs a little bit more help on that one. Yeah. Make sure when before we run out of time, Tina. Make sure before we run out of time that I get to just give me two minutes to talk about preventing that first cesarean. But let's talk about that right now because that's what I was talking okay. about before you came on. Oh, all right. I didn't hear any of that. Yeah, real briefly. Yeah, I'm sorry. As as one of our callers, I think it was Ariana, or maybe it was uh, Lonnie, who said that preventing the first C-section is is the key. And you know, so many people get C-sections now because they have breaches or twins, or because they're a few days overdue and they get unnecessarily induced, um, or they, or someone told them that they think their baby is too big. I mean, the pelvis is designed; a woman's pelvis is designed to deliver babies, and it doesn't matter whether your baby's five pounds or nine and a half pounds. You know, everyone deserves a trial of labor. So finding out whether or not you have a, um, a practitioner willing to give you these options is key. Because ultimately you can't force the practitioner to give you what you want. And they can't force you to take what, what you don't want. Uh, you have to listen to reason. Sometimes our, our medical indications are true. And if you have a good trusting relationship, then you will believe what they say. However, if you have hesitancy about what they're saying, always seek a second opinion. But there are practitioners who deliver babies breech, and there are practitioners who deliver twins, and there are practitioners who let you go to 42 weeks before they begin with the testing and the monkey business that goes along with that. There are doctors who, you know, when, when a doctor starts at 36 or 37 weeks saying things like, gee, this is a big baby, or that pelvis feels a little bit small, your pelvis was a little small, you're just a tiny person and your husband is six foot five, you start hearing that stuff, those are warning signs that you know what? You need to start thinking very carefully about whether this is the person for you. So those reasons, all those people would end up with cesarean sections. I mean, if you look at, statistically, I, I ran a midwifery practice in uh, Camarillo, California for 15 years, and we had a primary C-section rate of a little over 7%. Uh, while the same population of patients in another practice in the same community dealing with pretty essentially the same clientele 
had a primary C-section rate of 21 to 22 percent. So in other words, it was three times higher, and the only difference being the manner by which these patients were cared for, which was the midwifery model of care. All right, so I think a lot of you can avoid that first cesarean section by seeking out midwives for your prenatal care when at all possible. Obviously, some of you are going to have problems that require the consultation or collaboration with an obstetrician or a maternal fetal medicine specialist, but you know, obstetricians are trained in high-risk obstetrics, and quite frankly, midwives do normal birth better than doctors do. And I don't say that to be dis disrespectful to my colleagues. I, I say that because I'm one of those rare physicians who lived in both worlds for a very long time. And I can tell you that I don't, uh, I don't disagree with that. I think that midwives do normal birth better. They're high. They're trained in normal birth. Doctors are not trained in normal birth. That's not uh, the first time that I've ever heard that either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that just midwives do a better job. I mean, uh, there's a number of obstetricians that I've heard that from uh, with normal birth, and that uh, that going to an obstetrician for a normal birth with a low risk woman is over. Uh, yes, it is. Let me get to this next question. Um, let's see if I can. Oh, did I prove it? Here we are. Do I need to get checked out by my a doctor before I attempt to be back to make sure I'm a good candidate? That's from Shell. As opposed to, I mean, Michelle, I'm assuming you would mean as opposed to um, uh, never seeing a doctor, like having a midwife do it or having a midwife do it at home. Uh, the answer is the midwife or the other care provider you go to will, will have a backup physician. They will have a backup uh, supervising physician. And it sort of would be their responsibility, if they're willing to do VBACs, to check that out with their supervising physician. If their supervising physician says, okay, no, you personally don't need to see the doctor. Um, if they prefer that you see the doctor or that's their protocol, then yeah, you'll have a consultation with their doctor. Um, I hope that answers the question, because it sounds like what you're saying is, do I need to get checked out by a doctor? It means you weren't planning to see a doctor. Uh, so I hope that answers the question. Yeah, 